Welcome to When Will It End? I'm Josh, joined as ever by my co-host, my friend, my confidant, Charles Hobby. Charles, welcome to the show. Thank you. I like that that intro. I would say it's pretty stock for us. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. It's, why, it's, it's continues. Why fuck with a good thing? I haven't yet. Was that the first cuss word of the show? I don't know if we cussed during the intro episode. I don't know. We'll find out. Listeners... You know where to reach us. Yeah, mature reach. I always check that box on Squarespace saying if it's mature audiences only. We just got to swear at first two minutes just to make sure that check is, you know, I don't have to listen to the whole thing that way. Well, then potential advertisers like Squarespace will know they're not afraid to get a little ribald. Oh, yeah. A just little like, blue. Just like Shrek does. Just like Shrek does. We are uh, talking moments, by about 20 to 25 minutes after watching Shrek, the 2001 iconic animated feature that... Well, we, we had so much going into this. You know, in our intro episode, we talked about, you know, what is this going to... This is the foundational movie in what is basically a five, a four canonic movie, one spinoff, musical spinoff, multiple video games. There's an empire of Shrek out there. Uh, the TV show. Was there a show short-lived Fox? It yeah. would be on Fox, I bet. <laughs> it's, a, it's a verse. I, I mean, we, we were toying with names for the, for the show. We were, we were thinking about universes versus spider verses, but then the spider verse movie came out, so we had to scrap that idea. But basically, we were thinking verses. We had a bad one. What was it? It was a multiverse. Multiverse. Or? Yeah. Welcome to the multiverse. It was very. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't great. But anyway, I was saying like this. What a great start. This is a verse movie. This is a verse movie, and I guess what's incredible about Shrek is that getting into the plot of the movie, there's extraordinarily little plot in Shrek. So, yeah, I, I think speaking of plot, this is our first episode, Josh. We're getting a little ahead of ourselves. I guess you're right. Can we skip? Like, we didn't have a montage. There's no montage explaining what we are, who we are, what we're doing here. Though I, I wish that the major problem with this format is that we can't have, you know, a popular right. late 90s alt-rock oh, yeah. song play while we do a I lot mean, of demonstrative visual storytelling. That part, I mean, I was up until that point, I was like, I could totally do that but but here we go this is the podcast basically we're going to watch an entire series of films and we're going to take each film one at a time from the first movie that establishes the world and each installment we're going to look at what we like what we don't like what comes and goes what different directors or writers bring or take away from a series and we're really you know starting with again a series that kicked off the 21st century in a lot of ways sure we talked about this last time pre-9-11 Pre 9 11. I suspect that I saw this for Did my. You say life. ISIS? ISIS? Pre ISIS. This is, and this is also pre ISIS. Pre ISIS. Though the seeds have been sown from uh, American and Russian meddling in the Middle East for decades at that point. That's true. Anyways, but no, I, I think I saw this when I was 11 at the, the Berkshire Mall in Lanesboro, Massachusetts. I have no memory of where I saw this. Well, you know, Charles is very old and I am very young. So what? I was 11. Charles, I think, was 32. About, I forget, but uh, I do not, I mean, you know, this thing, I think when you're a kid, like between the ages of, I don't know, six and 12, maybe movies, like, are more, I don't know, they're more meaningful. Like, I remember the first movie I saw in theaters. I remember like going to the movies more high school. I mostly just remember Daredevil. Really? Yeah, that was like the big one that I saw when I was in high school. My dad and I tried to go to Daredevil, but it was sold out. So we ended up seeing <laughs> How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days. What? So I think I traded up ultimately. Wait, how did Daredevil sell out? Um, I, I thought that was just like considered to be a nightmare movie upon its release. Or was it actually... I, I think this was the burgeoning era of superhero movies where they were just trying stuff. And people were still excited about the idea of it. I mean, again, history has not been kind to Daredevil. Oh, no. It's a movie that I straight up have never heard a human discuss, you know, like ever. Let's talk. I, I went. I okay. saw it with a friend, but I had promised my other friend that I was going to see it with him, but I didn't want to see it again, but, but I was too cowardly to tell him that I'd already seen it, so I saw it again. So I saw Daredevil twice in theaters. More uh, more Charles' uh, tales of cowardice to come, yeah. I'm, I'm sure. All I remember is that guy with the bullseye on his head. Colin Farrell as bullseye. Oh, yeah. And then, was it Affleck? Who is it's Affleck is Daredevil, and he famously swore he'd never wear a superhero suit again. After Daredevil. After Daredevil. And then he wore a Batman suit. As Batman, yes. He's such a fucking liar. 
Yeah. I fucking hate that guy, but I love I his torso. I fucking tors- hate that guy. We're not doing that. I love <laughs> his torso. I love his torso. I like just how thick and sad he is as Batman. Sort of like, he's like a Shrek. He is Shrek adjacent. We noticed so much that all the bodies in this movie, we're not body shaming, but we just noticed. No, it's actually a beautiful movie about accepting people, which right. I think can't be overstated enough how like Shrek, I think is a good movie that I'm happy exists. Right. Me too. But all the bodies are very scary. Well, we're watching this moment of digital animation that it's so like unbelievably at pace at this point. But there, there are a few key moments where Shrek looks horrifying, and they're almost always when his face is broadly lit and he's trying to look normal, or when we see all of Shrek's body in a single shot. All of those shots are <laughs> horrifying and confusing. And I know the Uncanny Valley has been like, everyone loves that thing. We heard about it once five years ago. Can't stop talking about it. But this is one of those things. Did someone coin that phrase, or is it like I mean, it's been around term? forever? No, okay. it's been around for. It's like a thing. It's I don't know. It's just I don't remember where it came about. Probably. You know, I'll say 42 years ago it came out. Great. There we go. Done yeah. and done. But I, like it came into the vernacular very recently and everyone's talking about it. Yeah. Everyone's talking about that valley, the valley, the valley. But it's true. This this does. This is like the height of CGI. We were worried about it in our intro episode. I was worried about it. I think you were fine with it. You weren't too concerned. about I, it. I have low standards for so many things. Yeah. Why, Sex, why bring Shrek into that? Wine. Uh what else? I got Polar Brand Seltzer for this record. I didn't say seltzer. Okay, I thank didn't you. say seltzer. I do think they're pre- no, they're Snyder's uh, peanut butter filled pretzels. Pretty good. TJ's That's on brand. TJ's is pretty good too. The veggie crisps though are price dropper generics. That's fine. Okay, I'm vegan. And now we know. I just wanted to get that in there too. In the first uh, seven minutes of the podcast, we we now know Charles is vegan. I'm militant now. Militant. <laughs> this is a development. Yeah, when I first started, I was like, you know what. I'm just doing it for myself. I don't care about it. You know, you know what? I'm militant now. I talk down to people. Yeah. I feel good about it, too. It's really, you know me. I like being vindicated. I like feeling right. I like feeling Loves better. Loves vindication. I visited I Charles it. in Boston, and he was like, you like these shoes? They're vegan. You like this belt? Vegan. Yep. I just jack off to, to like old recordings of my mom saying, Charles, good job. You're right. Good it's job. True. Yeah. Mm. It's okay. uh, it's harrowing the first time, but mm. you do get used to it. <laughs> Thanks, mom. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho. Thanks, mom. Uh, um, from mothers to Shrek, the mother of all. Uh, no, uh, it doesn't. I would say you were talking about building a universe here. The the world of Shrek looks, for the most part, pretty good. Pretty good. Do that donkey hair when he screams at when Shrek screams at donkey, which is. <sighs> The yeah. hair just flies back. It looks so good. It looks so good. But also, I mean, like the landscapes, mm. I think the vistas, the skies. Yeah. Um, I, okay, there's no way to, to get around this. <laughs> Duloc. Okay, <laughs> we, we, were, we were trying. Let's put a, 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 we'll put a pin in that. Let's start with the swamp. In the, in the first, we talked about this, in the first two minutes of the movie, they just open with the most like nut swing and intro to a movie ever, Where it's just like, it's gross and weird. And yeah. Very... Just really weird. So I've actually seen Shrek twice now in the past 12 hours because Josh was like, well, why don't we, why, uh, this, is, uh, this is my Josh, why don't we, we'll each watch Shrek and then you'll come, we'll record Shrek episode, we'll go home, watch Shrek 2, record Shrek. And then what, this morning or was it last night? Anyway, I, any normal person planning for an event watches Shrek before the morning of the event. It's good Shrekitude. And then I get, that was nice. I got a text this morning, be like, "Hey, let's all just watch Shrek together." Yeah. Because I haven't watched it yet, because I'm a lazy sack of shit. And then I was like, "Well, I already watched it, but you know what, Josh? There's nothing more that I think I want to do right now than watch Shrek with you." So I've seen Shrek twice now. Hold on, you just you just took your nice thing where you yeah. got me off the hook, and now I'm back on the hook. Yeah, you're always on the hook. Yeah, it's hard to get off the hook here. Yeah, we do have the hook here. Um, You've ensnared me, much as uh, the donkey ensnared the heart of that dragon in Shrek. Yeah. Um, we'll get to all of this, but right. I just want to say I've seen Shrek twice now, but I think even after the first time I memorized the opening credit sequence beat for beat because of how grow, like it's so like, it's a big dick swing right in your face. We got, he starts off, he's reading the book, wipes his ass with the page from the book. Shit, then, shit kick, joke. Kicks open the door. He's reading a fairy tale book. He's reading this very, you know, generic you know, wrote fairy tale. Sure. And he's like, this fucking sucks. And tears Wait, the page can you do out. the Scottish accent? I know. Please. 
No, I just can't. Oh. This fuck. Oh, oh. This this fucking is, sucks. Oh, this awful. fucking this sucks. Awful. We're not recording this, right? No. He, okay. He tears the page out, wipes his ass, kicks the door open. Cue All Star by Smash Mouth, which we all know is in there, but we. It's like that's ninety seconds into the movie. Boom! Kicks it's that door incredible. down. Incredible. So okay, again, the first getting into the flow of Shrek after like almost two decades away from it, it is astonishing that this is a, this was ever a thing. It's so weird. Like so, yeah. we you go from the so once All Stars in, we have bathing in shit, brushing his teeth with shit, farting, killing. Sh- Killing fish. And then eating the fish he killed with his fart. Yeah. He also farts and then mugs to nobody. He does a little like, <laughs> oh, me. Saucy old boy. Little old me. But like to no one because he's yeah. in a swamp. Because he hates everybody. He hates everybody. This is Trump politics. That's it, the yeah. one bad thing. I mean, we'll, I'll go, we'll talk about it I think this later. is a very sweaty connection you're making here. Yeah. But, but I'm just saying it's like it's a good movie overall, but there are some pretty like right. anti-asylum, anti-refugee, build the wall sort of sentiments coming from our main character as well as from all characters. It's true. But well, I think but at the no, end of the day, it is about r- r- he wants to build the wall, much like Trump. But in the end of the you're day, you're focusing on this wall so much. But he breaks down the wall. That's what the movie's about. It's about breaking down the wall, not right. building the wall. I'm going to do an edit point cut. We're going to include Break Down the Walls by Jerry's Kids, the Boston hardcore band. We're going to put Can it you get in touch right with them first? here. We don't have to stop talking because we'll be. And when you listen back, you'll oh, know we need I'll that be right break. here. But not the, the second time, the first one. Okay, I see it. Here's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. The world of Shrek is gross and weird <laughs> and about fairy tales. And like, to me, I'm like, was there a cultural moment in 2000 where like fairy tales were in the zeitgeist at all? Like how much work did they have to do to get Shrek to mm. that point? It's a very strange entry point. It's a William Steig picture book. No one. Yeah. I love William Steig. He's an incredible author and illustrator. I sincerely yeah. doubt that there are young people today being raised in William Steig. Mm. Even for William Steig, mm. I don't think Shrek is in his top 10 of his most recognized no. work. No, there's the one about the rats. There's the rats. There's uh, he did a novel, a novel length one that's really good. But like, there's he wrote a whole novel length kids it's like a picture children's book. book. It's a, oh, okay. It's, yeah. But what I'm trying to say is like, it, how did this, how and why right. did this happen? Well, and also, I feel like similar to like Phantom Menace, there must have been a huge marketing thing before the movie even came out. Because, like, the ears are so recognizable. I don't remember it. But but he like, was ubiquitous. You, yeah. It was crazy. It was that whole push. Like, some they just pushed that down to make sure kids... I realized uh, kids dominate marketing for yeah. certain things, like food and film. If Because they know that if they see it on the TV, they're going to drag their parents there. So not only do you get the kids' tickets, which are cheaper... We also get those parents' tickets. Marketing 101 with Charles Hobby. Thank Here you, Charles. Here it is. I mean, that's yeah. going to be a segment of every episode. Oh, God. I sincerely hope not. But in okay. the same way that, like, cartoon characters are used to brand food, like, they just, they got to get those kids in there. They got to so, get those kids in but there. But then the parents are there, so we got to throw in some poop. No, wait, that's for the kids, too. I don't know who the poop jokes are for. No, all of Mike Myers' weird jokes. asides to himself in the movie that he Real estate at jokes. Right. Very okay. The, the the okay. So uh, to make a very long story short, this ogre lives in the swamp. Yada yada yada. All of the fairy tale creatures are being forcibly exiled from whatever the other part of the Shrekiverse. <laughs> That's the one thing the Shrekiverse is built. It's so confusing. But there's n- it's not like there's three maybe four actual locations in the movie. Can we talk about Delac? Okay, that's the thing. So one the, of them is the, the antagonist of the film is played by John Lithgow as Lord Far Lord Farquaad, which is sort of a character that I think is not fairly served by the script. I think Lithgow could have done a lot more in that, and Honestly, I like Lord Farquaad. He's funny. Everyone except for Eddie Murphy could have done a lot more, and I would have been happy. Well, we'll get back to the central problem of Shrek, which is that Shrek is a flawed protagonist. Yeah. And not for the classic anti-hero reasons. No. Just bad writing reasons. Bad writing. Bad he's acting like reasons. Weirdly joyless. The, the first third of the movie, he's so like, I don't give a fuck. I'm Shrek. Yeah, Suck my dick. Ass. And then like, he just kind of gets less interesting. But anyways, so Lord Farquaad lives in Duloc, which if any of you know what that joke is, please, it's D-U-L-O-C. Duloc? Duloc. They say it different ways. Lord Farquaad, the, the diminutive antagonist is this... He wants. He's a lord who wants to be a king, and he has to marry a princess. They spend <laughs> doesn't like, work. They spend seconds on that. It doesn't matter. He's already a lord. Like the whole plot is thrown at us so quickly. Like we learn yeah. that he wants to be king after we've learned that he's trying to kick all the creatures out. He doesn't explain either choice. We don't know how or why he's in the position he's in, or he's, really what that position is, or why no one lives in Delac. That's the okay. 
the, the strangest part of the movie is that you know there there's Shrek's little idyllic swamp in the woods. Then there's this Pyongyang like clean <laughs> empty city where the, the authoritarian ruler lives. But there doesn't seem ever like there's a lot of people in the movie. I mean, we can only assume that it's just budget. And technology limits. Just they did not want to, to animate we, the first stuff? moment. We we're like, this looks like Baldur's Gate. Like yeah. they obviously were having problems with people moving. They got the donkey okay because they just like photo. They just like looked at a dog and made it look like a dog. But like anytime a person, like that's why they made all the bodies so weird. I think just because a real body looked weird. Everyone who's not cartoonishly disfigured looks <laughs> really weird in the movie. And then the ones that looked cartoonishly disfigured also look really weird. It's, but yeah, no one wins. I no guess. one wins. But I think you're just assuming like, oh, that thing looks weird. So it's weird movements are not bothering me. But then you see a person and you're like, that's really strange. I don't like that. I would say even, I would even de- go down to Diablo level cutscenes. For Diablo 1. Yeah, Diablo 1. Yeah. Which the height of the day, Blizzard was making great cutscenes back then. They sure were. And then they gave it, they gifted us with Warcraft the movie. Did, Which we've did, all seen, never. loved, yeah. and collected all the associated merch with, I'm sure. I mean, I already had all the merch. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say my life for ire for a minute. We're like, nope, that is StarCraft. Yeah. Please don't make a StarCraft movie. Oh, shit. That'd be good. I don't know. They could just start with StarCraft 2. Why would they do that? Yeah, the first one was sort of boring. This is terrible. Anyways, so we're, okay, so Duloc is the home of of, of the of Lord Farquaad. And again, it's, if you know the joke, why it's called Duloc, Duloc, I don't get it. The whole thing is like Jeffrey Katzenberg at DreamWorks like fucking hated Michael Eisner at Disney, so Lord Farquaad like fuckwit, I guess, is like looks like Michael Eisner. They make little dick jokes the entire movie. Yeah, um, at us, not for us. At no, us. at us. Yeah, very again. strange. Because for all the, like, birds exploding and donkeys falling on his face and whatever, there's, like, a ton of, like, very blue stuff in there. Yeah. Anyways, so they, they, they sort of cheat with the plot in such dramatic, beautiful ways where things just happen extremely abruptly. They get to, in any other movie, the going to save the princess from the dragon in the tower would be the big climactic finish. Mm-hmm. That's the biggest action set piece in the movie. And then there's another hour of the movie. Right. And nothing comes close to being that dramatic or ridiculous. <laughs> Even the final fight when Shrek, you know, declares his love for Princess Fiona at the yeah. end. There's like a very mild fight. It's like. It's not even a fight, really. Right. You know, there he punches some guards. The dragon shows up. It's like. Like we've seen him punch guards. Yeah. He, that, was, that was him. And he's a lover boy now. He's not a fighter anymore. It's I true. I think that's really what we learned from that scene. He's ready to put down the steel. Pick up the. Dil- the dildo put down the steel pick up the dildo well there we go 2019 <laughs> put down the steel pick up the dildo yeah i mean he was, he was ready for that his whole life i think but he just like didn't feel like it right he didn't feel like he was allowed to be the dildo wielder rather than a a fighter you know it's but, a it's a real transformation it's really beautiful we saw and she, the, the irony is that she floats and goes through we think a transformation, but then stays the same. And he, without any tech, any special effects, no lens flares, no shining lights, he goes through the transformation. It's so beautiful. It really is beautiful. He learns well, about friendship. He learns about love. Love learns yeah. about learns about everything. But being part of a community. Sure. Uh, what Charles is referring to is, of course, the that Princess Fiona, voiced by the, you know, the majestic Cameron Diaz, is a normal, traditional. Norm heteronormative it's in the speech beauty. or the spell in the spell yeah there's a very clunky spell that was cast on her kiss by it by days send it by night yep nailed you'll, it. Be, you'll be normal till the end of the fright that, that's it i believe that's exactly it kiss your buddy on the lips like lord farquaad and kind of shrek and there's I, just so little backstory they just like right which is <laughs> when we talk about it as a series this is like the most slipshod just like building up a fake town of a movie i have never seen the rest of them but it feels like they already knew they were going to make more and they just need to set the characters running build this dumb world that didn't have any people living in it just to get the money to make more and get people to see it well okay all the middle parts between set pieces look like they're in world of warcraft style like woods basically yeah and like what i was saying earlier about the plot 
when they're going to the castle, it flies by. And one of the many montages set to a very bad alt rock song, they just like are at the castle in seconds, basically. Seconds. And it wasn't, there's, in that scene, you see a donkey piss on fire. They climb a rock or They climb a it's rock. Like, and it's like, this is the scene where you build the friendship. But they just get us right to that castle. But they skip all that. And then they have the little scene where Shrek teaches Donkey to be brave by and, being a huge asshole, which is, yeah, you know. huge asshole. Very weird. And then he steals the babe line. Yeah. That'll do, Donkey. That'll do. That'll do, Donkey. That'll do. That'll do. That'll do. Sorry, that was from Train Spotting, actually. Whoa, whoa. Not from Babe. Be- before we get too far, that'll. Eddie Murphy kills it in this movie. I think he's fantastic in it. I, I mean. He runs out of stuff to do at certain points, but, like, I think. The good, the stuff you remember, listener, kills. Kills. I mean, the layers scene it holds. The up. layers scene is great. It holds up. Uh, um, the scene where he talks about friendship worked. This at the yeah. end, where he's like, "I forgive you." That's right. what friends do, and then he forgives him. Right. Because Shrek is so used to being rejected. Right. Oh God. I forgive you. I forgive you. Uh, there's the scene. What else is funny? I mean, he's funny. The I mean I feel like his ad limbing is funny like the scene where he's like oh you're not afraid of the dark princess oh I'm still afraid of the dark that's funny that's like he like they let him have some space oh the boulder he's like when he talk, yeah. he's trying to compliment good bolt Shrek's like the joke sucked house. up yeah. until then right the joke it like picks up. oh that's a, that's your shitty house that I just made fun of well and then he like it does the the real joke which has been done a thousand times like backpedaling. Yeah, and, then, and he does an exceptional back. Nice boulder. Right, he like, throws in a little twist. You're that's like, killer. That's why it was worth what I'm assuming was a truckload of money to get Eddie Murphy in this movie. Right, he he nails it. He sings a lot. He hums a lot. A lot of singing. Um, he inspires Shrek through song, really, to make mm. his final de- demonstration of love to Fiona. Right. It's amazing. Right. And that's the thing about the movie we haven't talked about yet. <laughs> the cultural references in it like again, you were talking earlier about how how much of a blank slate this movie is in so many ways. They they just like the rules for what is in this universe for a reference are so open ended. Anything goes. Anything goes. Literally, the last line of the movie is a Tiny Tim reference from the Dickens Christmas Carol. Is a Christmas it's crazy. Carol. No, so we're, I keep fighting to get back to this. But and, it's also a weird. Oh God, damn sorry. It. But it's like the only reason why they made it is because Tiny Tim doesn't have legs at work, and then they like. I think they were like, okay, we've established that Gingerbread Man is now on a crutch. Yeah. What's a crutch what, joke? What's like, a cr- oh, Tiny Tim, why not? Great. Let's put but it in. Let's throw it in there. And that's like everything. Why not? Yeah, that's the movie I feel in like, a nutshell. Like, I want to see the shit that didn't get allowed because if that shit gets in, what was not allowed in? I assume there was so much shtick. Well, you're going to love Shrek too. Um, <laughs> again, watching this. Okay, to get back to the blank slate. Yeah, yeah, get back to so it. So on the way to the castle, it, go, it flies by. They get to the castle. They they free Princess <laughs> Fiona. The the trip back from the castle to Duloc is basically the middle third of the movie. It's so much longer. It's so much longer. And, and all this shit just happens to them between the castle and Duloc. And... Robin Hood shows up in a very unnecessary Matrix referencing fight Ugh. scene. Um, very weird scene. I think Matrix reference are some of my least favorite. I think they do. I really think they go back for a second one in Trek 2. Ugh. You know, like even in one of my favorite shows of all time, uh, Spaced, I think has a Matrix reference, which is really bad. And like, I, well, I mean, Spaced, I mean, took oh. so many big swipes at, at that kind sure. of pop culture stuff. I know, but it's like those sorts of things, like I was talking to you about, they don't do that anymore. They don't do a lot of things anymore. They don't like, like I can't think of a movie I saw where the soundtrack was built to sell CDs. I can't think of movies that just like make fun of or not even make fun of. They're not even making fun of Matrix and they're not even making fun of Tiny Tim. They're just like, oh, people will know what that is. Yeah. Let's just make that because people will understand it. Well, in a way it acknowledges the flimsiness of the track reverse because like, Again, the premise is about an ogre in a fairy tale land who like wanted to swamp back and fell in love, and like that's a weird story with a lot of emptiness in between stuff. The major plot beats. There's so much space to fill in a 90 minute movie that flies by. Right. So yeah, um, watching it, what I discovered is it's such a blank slate of a, of a universe. I was just transposing Shrek 2 stuff into Shrek. You were. Because it just feels... Puss in Boots is not in this movie. No. And I, I sincerely thought that Puss in Boots was going to appear in the woods because I think in right. Shrek 2, Puss in Boots appears in the woods at some point because it's... I, If I remember correctly, 
And the second one, I, okay, I guess we'll leave my forecasting for the end of the episode. But right. what I'm trying to say is that they've created a world that is so vast and open. And there's the plot is very light. Like I was I was talking to you about this. I recently watched Clueless for the first time. I mean, it was delightful and wonderful. Are you talking to me about this? I think I mentioned this to you. The Amy oh. Hackerling classic Clueless. I mean, I've seen it. I finally saw it like in the last month. Oh, wow. What'd you think? Everything worked except for the major weird end plot device of her falling in love with Paul Rudd, her brother. Right. Very weird. Yeah. Doesn't work. I don't buy it. It's strange. This movie, similarly, when pressed for a plot development in the last third, relies on the Shrek mishears a conversation yeah. with Fiona about herself to Donkey. And that's like, come on. It's, 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 it's a very – for a movie that like is – formulaic but relentlessly weird that's a very boring thing yeah and that was kind of annoying to me yeah i agree it's uh it moves in like the plot's been done so many times what really stands out are the like it's gross like that's why kids love it that's why you liked it you're laughing so much so gross yeah it's so gross I I, i miss that sense of like anarchic weirdness where it's just sort of like this is a kid's movie so we get to do all this stuff yeah. And it doesn't, it seems gleeful and not forced. Like I've seen a zillion movies where there's like, and they threw in a fart joke here or a kick to the nads there. And it's just sort of like, <laughs> yeah. that was a right. good one where he like, for no reason is sliding down the big pole and he gets busted. nuts busted crushed. In the nuts. <laughs> and then they even his, made his like, and walk funny. He hobbles off because his nuts got crushed. <laughs> Crush. <laughs> why why does he even have Sh- nuts? Sh- Shrek's dick looks like. <laughs> Very Probably similar. like Shrek, yeah. <laughs> Just a little Shrek. A little Shrek. A little on face. I mean, he's basically his body's modeled after a chode. <laughs> his yeah, stupid no, he's, head. He doesn't have a jaw in some no, scenes. His, his, his head and face is legitimately the absolute worst part of the animation. From different angles, it looks like they've stretched his face over this like horrible frame. But like the dimensions keep changing. Yeah. And like... Yeah, sometimes Sh- Shrek has a big protruding jaw. Sometimes he's like this, he's just like a weird like gremlin just, like gumdrop motherfucker. <laughs> it, it's really weird. I didn't like it. The worst shot of the entire movie is him sitting at his dinner table. <laughs> it, it looks <laughs> crazy. Not even the, the moment where he's lonely at the end when Hallelujah is on. Oh god. Like the first one where he's happy eating his regular meal. Like it just looks so it looks bad. awful. I want to definitively find out who did that version of, uh, I think it's one of the Wainwrights. Oh, yeah. So we were talking about this. We were watching it like because West Wing. That it's year, Rufus Wainwright. That is the Rufus one. Wow, wait, hold so on. Wait, bad. No, wait. This is crazy. Uh, the Rufus Wainwright's version of the song Hallelujah by the great Leonard Cohen, a mm. Jew like me, appeared in the soundtrack album. It was John Cale's version yeah, that there appeared we in the go. film. In a radio interview, uh, Rufus Wainwright suggested that his version of Hallelujah did not appear in the film due to the glass ceiling he was hitting because of his sexuality. Whoa. An alternate explanation (laughs) that takes Rufus off the cross. Um, Although the filmmakers wanted Kale's version for the film, licensing issues prevented its use in the soundtrack album because Wainwright was an artist for DreamWorks, but Kale was not. That sounds a little... I mean, I don't know. I don't want to, you know, dismiss him too much but usually money and licensing is more about cds than but who knows i mean the movie is about accepting yourself it would be really i think we'd solved uh homophobia by 2001 yeah come on i think that was dealt with yeah yeah um so the people who did the the score which i don't remember because most of the songs are like by the eels (laughs) or like the eels is the best song in there can we talk about sort the music? Of. It's very jarring. I found the music very jarring. Can we talk? Can we just take a quick mom break? Let's take a mom break. I mean, we after asked- our screening, I asked my mother, "What do you remember about Trek?" And she goes, "Well, you 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 really liked it, and I liked the music, <laughs> <laughs> which is amazing because like." Great takes. The way the music works is that it seems like they really scripted entire montages around right. the length of a song they wanted to use. And see, that was what we were talking about with Hallelujah. Was like. The Rufus one probably would have been who knows, but like the dragon appears during that montage out of nowhere. It's like it's a beautiful cutback between broken glass and chandelier and fireplace to fireplace and and bodyguard she wants to fuck to Shrek. And it's like all these mirrors coming into each other and then suddenly, oh and yeah, we need to introduce that 
Donkey's fucking the dragon, so we'll throw that into this montage. Donkey is looking into his own reflection in the river. Sure. So they do seamlessly lead us to the revelation right. that the the distraught dragon is is wandering around the woods. Right. Everything happens in the woods. Th- that's the thing about Shrek. Like everything is so elastic. I I have no sense of like like everything happens very quickly when it needs to happen quickly. Other times. I don't know how much time passes. At some point, the dragon is freed, like, what, a, a hours after they left? Because, like, it's, like, a day or two after. The events of the movie take place in, like, I want to say three or four days. Which Not is- even. So, first, yeah, so first day. Sh- Shrek takes a fat shit. <laughs> fat shit. Kicks Bates open his outhouse shit. door. Puts shit in his mouth. Covers himself <laughs> in shit. Smash mouth is blasting. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you should all start every morning. Somebody. I mean, that's basically, I think even 2001, 2018, 2019, whatever. That's like, that's a perfect morning. It's true. So like, it's so relatable. They really wanted us to be suckered into feeling relatable to this ogre where it turns out that down deep, he feels a little lonesome. Well, I would say this movie actually transcends the, the albatross of relatability. Because ult- ultimately, it's a movie where people who are both not conventionally attractive and are uninterested in conventional uh, conventional attractiveness just divert off into their own thing. Mm. So, like, it not, it's they're not just saying, like, everyone's beautiful. They're saying, like, you don't have to be beautiful at all or even like beautiful things. Right. So I think I like that about the movie where it's, like, I think a more relatable thing would be, like, they find a way to present these people in a more, like – slightly you know nodding more to conventional uh senses of, of presentability and they really don't do that they go back to that swamp shrek and fiona get married in front of all of their freaky friends yeah the freaks the freaks that he hates but loves in high school were you, were you a jock or a freak mm, i wasn't either i was a loser what's the one where you're smart we were what where you're, you're smart you said smat. I was talking like how smat. we smat. Yeah, you're a Southie, ain't you? Yeah. Uh, so there was the freaks. I was a geek, like the show. Yeah, so good. I was a geek. Yeah. I didn't smoke marijuana. Right. And I didn't play sports. Have you ever seen the photo of the people getting married in Trek outfits? Yes, I have. I mean, that's the direct outcome of this movie, though, right? I get if you're like, <laughs> if you're someone who's if like. you're a freak. If you're someone who's not conventionally attractive, let's say you're overweight or you don't, you're not, you're not a, as someone as strikingly handsome as a Mike Myers off screen. Sure. You got a you big old green head. Got a big old green head. I, I do ultimately think that though that couple obviously is most of the source of great derision. If that was a real wedding, I, I mostly applaud them where I'm like, the message of the movie is beautiful. Where that's where I love that. Like Shrek is like, like you, we pointed this out. He's like, he gets a flower to go woo. Fiona. Yeah. It's like, good scene. It's pretty. And I think that sucks. And like, you're pretty, but I like you anyways. And it's like, yeah. It's, it's, like, he's uh, not trying. He's not trying to win the affection of a beautiful person. He likes her because she's nice to him, and he gets over the fact that she happens to be beautiful, which for him sucks. Yeah, he hates that shit. And that's what the book. I think I haven't read the book since I was a wee lad, but I'm pretty sure it's about a guy that hates pretty things. Mm. A little track, 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 track. So I think that's what he says a lot. Track, track, track. I just love this. Track. He's like a Pokemon. <laughs> just says his name. But anyway, we were talking. Um, before we, we were talking before we got on that was uh, so first day blast in the, the somebody yeah all that uh, I believe same day it cuts so it has to be the same day to the other forest part somewhere else in the forest where donkey escapes right runs into Shrek that night the creatures are all released onto his swamp so that's first day second day goes to the castle gets sent on the quest uh, goes does, to Duloc goes to Duloc a day does not go by. They're already at the princess's place. So you're saying that, okay. So like you're saying oh, by the end of day one. I think they, no, they camp one night. He pisses on the fire in the morning. Okay, so, so that's day, day one. That's day two. So day one. No, no, hold on. Oh, hold sh- on, stop. Josh, no, no. just listen. I got this down. I've seen it twice. You've only seen it once. I got this. Oh my God, I saw it in 2001. Oh. Whoa. So see, day one, the poop. And then the creatures show up. Poop, creatures, do They go to bed. Quest. They, no, no, they go to bed. Oh, you're right. Fuck, morning you're right. of, you're next right. morning, 
Because they all show up at night when he's trying to sleep and eat his little meal. These little eyeballs oh, and fish no, no, no. And, and the slug. And drink martinis. <laughs> drink martinis. <laughs> that is earwax candle. That's, that was the, that's the drink of choice is yeah. a martini. Everyone drinks martinis. Him and Farquaad both do it. Yep. So they're more alike than we... I mean, their bodies are the same and they both drink martinis. Mm. Um. So anyway, day two. But hold on. One major difference in bodies. You know my guy Shrek's got a monster dick. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know anything about Farquaad's dick. They make little dick jokes the entire time. That's true. But oftentimes you make little dick jokes about people that you don't like. Not because That's true. Have you ever seen a dick? (laughs) Go on. Have I ever seen a dick? Go on. (laughs) Have you ever seen a... I mean... I have seen a dick. Okay. You've called people's dicks small in your life, I take it. It, I'm certain that that's... Have you ever seen the dick in question? Rarely. Yeah, exactly. I feel like you make... The movie is all about making assumptions about things you don't know, such as dicks. Really getting to the heart of Shrek here. Anyway, day two is a part of the montage. So the montage is the second day where they're on the quest after the contest, the wrestling contest. Okay, so day, day two, they wake up, goes to Duloc, go off in the quest. During the montage, they go to bed. They go to bed. Day Our, three. And the end of the montage is them pissing on the fire and getting to the castle. Okay, so then day three, they rescue Fiona from the castle. Day three, you got it, baby. Day three, they go to the castle and, and on rescue the, Fiona. On the way back, she insists that she, they... Okay. Yeah, she insists. Day four, we're in the woods. We're in the woods. We got a little Robin Hood yeah, action. Robin Hood action. That's about it. And then they talk. But again, because she doesn't want them to discover her secret, right. they go to bed again. Day five, morning of, <laughs> they get in a big fight. Farquaad shows up, takes her away. And she insists on getting married that day. This is a five. Day, this is okay. a work week movie. A work week movie. <laughs> business week, baby. This is a work. This is a Monday through Friday. One nine, business week. Nine okay. to five, too. So at the end of day five, uh, that's the conclusion of the story. Five days. You heard it here. This <laughs> we is broke it down. Great fucking podcast. Yeah, we, no one's ever done this I before. I didn't even think we were going to break down the day by day beats of Shrek, but we just did <laughs> well, five luckily, days. Luckily, I saw it twice. Thank God. I and you and you thought I was being lazy when I was being very clever so you tricked me into doing this as a good yes. friend as a, as a as only a friend would i deceived you into getting better at your craft of watching movies as donkey says that's you're a cruel only a cruel friend would only your you're a cruel friend that's what donkey said and boy put it on a shirt huh sounds good <laughs> that's only what... a cruel friend <laughs> uh yeah so it's a five-day story it's really short and yet it feels like there's so much vacuum. Yeah, like there's it, a lot of empty space. It makes no sense. <laughs> empty time. D- day four in particular, you acknowledge <laughs> this. Uh, there's like a little montage and they get to the Robin oh, Hood yeah. part. And then there's all the French jokes and uh, yeah, which I was veiled by. threats of sexual assault from oh, Robin God. Hood. And, uh, yeah, there's, that one's, that's a weird moment where it's like the movie's pretty nice most of the time about like love and sexuality. And that's just about... Well, Robin but, but hold on. They, they, no, 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 it's not just about that. They give Fiona an opportunity as the female lead to kick ass. That's true, and he is the rapist. Robin Hood is the it's, rapist. It's su- heavily suggested in this children's so fairy tale weird. movie. But that, that being said, they're like yelling in French very quickly, <laughs> and I could barely make out that as an adult. Well, there's a line that's like, he. it says, and he's going to get... Laid and then the you joke. think he's going to say lay, but then he says paid. That they're both like conjoining them sort of equates mm. his payment as sex from someone who doesn't want to fuck Robin Hood. And he's French. Yeah, which is like the whole thing is that he's British. Right. That's the whole thing. Didn't it? we all just go see the wonderful new Robin Hood? Robin Hood. Robin Hood always. Starring Robin Hood. And Jamie Foxx. Yeah. And we never, uh, Ben, uh, Ben, uh, um, wonderful villain from Rogue One. Ben, ben Kingsley. Mendelssohn. Mendelssohn. Oh, Mendelssohn's in it? He plays... Oh, Dude, I'll see anything with Mendelssohn. The Mendel, he, he works his Mendelssohn magic as the Sheriff of Nottingham. That sounds incredible. Everyone said it was monster trash, but I'd still like to see it. But like Mendelssohn, like whatever, what was that movie Well, I mean, about? if you think Sp- about... Uh, Spielberg. What was the Spielberg movie that came out? Oh, AI. Ready uh, Player One? AI. No, yeah. Ready Player One. <laughs> yeah, he was, he was good in that. He was great in that. But everything else was awful. So I will see a bad movie with I don't a good... think awful. I think wildly mediocre. Sure. Anyway, yeah. I would see I will see any movie with a Ben Mendelssohn in it. Wreck It Ralph 2 is a better uh ready player one. Does it have Ben Mendelssohn in it? No Mendelssohn. I'm not gonna see it. No Mendelssohn, no way. No Mendelssohn, no way. No way. Man, we're getting so many good catchphrases so many... this episode. If I was gonna recast, if I was gonna redo Shrek, and this is yeah. something we haven't really talked about wow. very much, I would get Mendelssohn as Lord Farquaad in a fucking heartbeat. Really? But you like a Lithgow. I think Lithgow's great, but I'm saying if we're going to redo so it, so we're doing on Shrek Five. Well, which I is, mean, well, let's get to the end of Shrek Four and see if the if it needs another one. Right. So look, we're getting towards the end of the podcast. 
for wait the episode or the whole th- we're done <laughs> this is it this is it we watch Shrek. What more can we do? No. We started uh, too big. We're getting towards the end of episode one. So I want to ask you a, a few questions. The first is, um, do you think this demands a sequel? Yes, absolutely. I totally agree. I mean, this is not even a movie. As you said, you are filling the holes left by the absence of a plot with move, like two and three into Shrek one because there's nothing in here. Right. This is an empty room waiting to be filled with life. It's funny because, and, and let me get your, your this feedback is, on this. This is your mother's womb, Josh. Shrek is my mother's womb. This is waiting to be this filled is where with I was seed. Cre- oh my God. My mom's not going to have any kids. She's in her mid-60s. Yeah. She, I was talking to her just today about yeah, how realistically. She, she said she's retiring. She's had one job her whole life. Oh, and I raised children. She told me that today. That's classic my mom, where she's a fascinating woman who has traveled the world. She's so well read. She's like three graduate yeah. degrees. And like this Oh, is... and I've had one job for twenty seven years at Oh and I raised kids. She, I get my moroseness from my mother. Yeah. Love her as oh, I yeah. do. I think of without a doubt, my moroseness. And your comes humor somewhere. from your dad. It's true. It's a weird mixture of like like a West Coast like raised from the dust of a ranch in Texas mm. to, to Oregon and Medford, Oregon to like the uh, mile a minute Brooklyn bullshitting. Sure. Uh, it's very weird. Where do you get all those boils from? Do you think? Uh, I think the rubbing I do in my face is I'm always rubbing and then yeah. it just raises welts. <laughs> the, the fluid builds. And so not enough from either your mother or your father. I actually have syphilis. Anyways. So yeah, no, uh, yeah, it, it, it's, it's, it's a movie where I, I, Okay, so here's my question for you. What works better in the movie? The fairy tale premise or all of the pop culture references? Because the fairy tale stuff is <laughs> almost immediately discarded by the rest right. of the movie. Can it's- I say neither? I mean, that's the thing. <laughs> that's why it is a, it's not we need more sequels because they were just g- giving us little hints of the fairy tale stuff. Oh, there's yeah. Pinocchio. Oh, there's the three witches. Oh, there's Tinkerbell. Oh, there's all these things that we recognize. But they just like... They're edging us with these fairy tale references, and then like we need more movies to really, really get this, tease this out. Yeah, yeah, really get this play box going. Okay, play so box. that was my first. We we both that's agree this. Television. Th- they couldn't at this point. They, there's no universe where we're not getting a Shrek two. Right, it has to happen. So much stuff to cover in the fairy fairy tale world. Um, my second question is this: What are the things in Shrek that you really want to see developed more? You sure. talked about the fairy tale humor and stuff, but what are the things about Shrek that you're like, okay, I want to see these characters or the or these storylines or this world? Like, what what do you want more of? Well, it's weird because I already know like Puss in Boots is coming. Puss in Boots I is coming. Baby. I didn't even know that that was an option based on Shrek One, and here we go. I already have something to look forward to. Do you know who voices Puss in Boots? Yeah, Antonio Banderas. Everyone knows that. Yeah, and I was like, how do I know this? I don't know. It's so dumb that I know this. I've never even seen the movies. But yeah, I, I mean, that's going to be fun, I think. And then, like, I'm really excited to really explore the, the relationship between Fiona and Shrek. Well, they've overcome that first obstacle. What's next for them? Right, more obstacles, I'm thinking. My, my concern is that, and I voiced this to you while we were watching it, is that the Shrek who don't give a fuck is such a great Shrek. Right, love that Shrek. Great Shrek. I'm really concerned, like, what happens when all of a sudden Shrek is bound down by relationships and bound down by a community. Everything that made Shrek a nut-swinging, all-star listening, literal shitter is is gone now. He's now, like, part of this world. Yeah. So are we going to lose literal. some of the ineffable qualities of that Shrek we, we all fell in love with? We do. We are. I mean, I mean, absolutely. I think we already lost it near the end of the first one. So maybe that's going to be the struggle for the rest of the series is being like, oh, he's got a wife. He's probably going to have kids. You're right. I Now, I, well, let's get into the next part here. You've not seen Shrek 2. Or 3 I, or 4. I, right. Well, that's neither here nor there at this point. I haven't seen Shrek 3 or 4 either. Okay. I have seen it's Shrek exciting. 2. Like Shrek 1, my memories of it, here's what I'll remember from it. Okay. Puss in Boots arrives. Great. A, a <laughs> seismic cultural event when Puss in Boots arrives. Um there is a castle siege involving all the fairy tale characters. Whoa. To what end? I don't remember. That sounds incredible. I believe is there, there magic. There's so much magic. Oh my god, oh, I love magic. There is, I believe, a giant gingerbread man. My, for everyone listening, my eyes opened. It, it, I've been like saucers. <laughs> they were closed like the entire time. Just suddenly, yeah. boom. he finally opened his eyes. Wow, yeah. wow, wow, wow. And they're wow, very jaundiced. Wow. <laughs> Really? Oh, yeah, God. Like yellow I mean, seeping in. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I, it's okay. I, I mean... You got to get out. Get out? Get out. You're I, in a sunken place. Ooh, uh, I, do, so do you think the, the third and fourth ones are coming? I think pop culture reference movies were... I mean, we've talked about this already. I think they're sort of dying out in that time period. Do you think they're going to 
keep that forward? Do you think they're going to keep pushing these inane Okay, well, well one inane joke... Dickens references? Or is it going to be like start making Shrek movies? Well, one inane joke, remember, is that the gingerbread man has... A, there's a thong joke in the second movie where the gingerbread man is wearing a thong. Is that a new joke or is that a reference? Uh, I don't... It's just like a bit where they're like... I think thongs at the time right. likely were part of the... The zeitgeist. Well, I'm trying to remember... Like, Okay, so the, the fourth movie came out in 2000... 10 or 10? 11. Okay, so we're looking at this one decade-long period where like it was... We'll find out by the end of the fourth movie if this premise could possibly have survived into another decade, which is very hard to imagine. And all these are now all post 9-11. These are all, yeah, we're, we're, this is the last, just for, for <laughs> The listeners, first and last. The first and last pre-9-11 Shrek film. Side note, I just saw this and I, I must comment on it. Do, do you know one actor who turned down an offer to play Shrek? Uh, Sean Connery. Interesting, but no. Okay, so everyone knows that initially Chris Farley was supposed to play Shrek. I didn't know that. Yeah, that was a thing. Was he just going to be live action in a in a com in like an animated world? Maybe we'll tag this on, but uh, no, he was going to be he's going to voice it. Okay, they actually recorded his dialogue as Shrek, and well, he sort of looks like Shrek. Online. Well, that's true. He sort of looks like that was the all time. right. He sort of looks right. like Shrek. Hey man, I watched Shrek. I'm not making fun of him. Just shut the fuck up for a minute. Thank you. What we can do is tack on the Chris Farley audio, which apparently is online. We can okay. hear Chris Farley as Shrek. But no, Nick Cage was initially offered Ooh, the role of Shrek wow. as well. That I think they be... made a good choice. Well, no, actually, that might have been... I think he's a little too unpredictable. Can I share with you his quote about why he turned it down? Yeah, please. When you're drawn, in a way, it says more about how children are going to see you than anything else. And I so care about that. Whoa. I don't know what that means. <laughs> he just... doesn't want to be animated, but he's been animated a lot. He's in Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. He was in Mandy, which well, has brief animated parts. I haven't seen it. Don't ruin it. You haven't seen it yet? I still... No, not since I saw you like fucking a day ago. Fuck. God, we got to watch it. On. Okay, so um, looking into Shrek 2, what I'm looking for is this. I want to see that soundtrack. I want to see how prominent they're going to like billboard these, yeah. these, these soundtrack albums in it because that's a huge part of Shrek 1. Especially for your mom. And for probably moms everywhere. Mom's got a lot out of it. Two, I want to see the... I really... I, I'll go back to this. I think the antagonist in Shrek, Lord Farquaad is extremely thinly drawn and doesn't really... He's in it for a very small amount of time. Can I interrupt? Yeah. Do you think he's coming back? Yeah, I know he was mm, he The was dragon eaten, did eat him. Yeah. But like... Sort of in the way that Gandalf falls. If you don't see the blood... You shall not pass! Ah, wizards! I'm a wizard! Yes. Mm. Oh, but like... He, you think he's dead in the first one. Yeah. And then he comes back. I know we're not supposed to talk about other series in the series, but that's a rule I just made up. I think it's oh, a pretty sure, good rule, go. though. Okay, fine. A no bit more arbitrary, story. but fine. No <laughs> talk about others. No, no we can... that, yeah, that's insane. We literally can't do that. <laughs> That'd be really intense, but no, though. Okay, so what I'm trying to, I, I, we get I, to slap, but I'm just saying, I think Farquaad might come back. Okay, I don't think he's going to come back. Well, you've seen them, so that's probably but a pretty again, good guess. Like the first movie, I. <laughs> Do not remember what happens in Shrek 2 besides the broadest possible moments of action or comedy. Oh, and it ends with a musical number on a castle wall. That I remember mm, from, again, like 15 years ago. I'm you sure. know what I'm hoping for? What's that? A scene where the, the dragon takes a big old shit and out, pops, out pops Farquaad. I mean, I know there's going to be a scene where the dragon takes a shit because that's what this movie's all about. Right. Shit. Piss. It's a, a literal kind of shit and piss. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of butt crazy. jokes. Like every, I bet if I made a supercut of every scene that had to do with shit, piss, butts, dicks. Well, I know what you're doing this weekend. Yeah, it would be like probably 20 minutes of a 90 minute film, maybe longer. Yeah, there's the extended scene with the arrow in the butt. There's a lot of butt related stuff. It's true, and it all it all kills. Oh, there's it shit. There's kills. the scene where uh, where the dragon kissing Shrek's ass. That is a confusing moment in the film, yeah. <laughs> you thought Shrek was pantsless. But no, he's wearing his like shitty, like tartan, plaid, is, awful. But they're skin tight because when yeah, like, his tight. little shirt rides up, sometimes you can yeah. see they animated his like tight ass. Oh, there is one uh, perplexing moment of nudity where we see Lord Farquaad shirtless. And it's just <laughs> it's a, little, a little gremlin of a man. It's real weird. His head is as big as his chest, and he's got a giant head. And a huge jaw. Huge jaw, baby. He's Take like that, so... Eisner. <laughs> you... I, I would call it anti-Semitic, but it's Jeffrey Katzenberg and Michael Eisner feuding, so I yeah. feel like... Self-hating. 
Thank you. It's, Thank you, Charles. It's self-hating. That's your role in this. Anti-Semitism, yeah. And diagnose self-hating Jews. Thank yeah. you. Hey, you got to get an outside perspective <laughs> sometimes. Exactly. This is exactly the, the, the correct circumstances for that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, it's it's. I hope that we get a Farquaad in two or three or four. I hope we get, you know, I wouldn't say no to more Farquaad, but I want like a bigger villain in two. I want, yeah, I on, want Shrek to be, alone. Shrek's biggest challenge leave in Shrek 1 is to accept himself. Right. And to f- accept love. Right. So where do we go into? The scene where he's like, I'm not going to, he's like, Eddie Murphy's like, who are you trying to, who are you trying to keep out? Walzer to keep you alive? He's like, yeah, no shit. Mm. Walzer's trying to keep you alive. Mm. He's like, who are you trying to keep out? And then he goes, everybody. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. I really felt the emotion and the Scottishness. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, uh, that was the thing. You kept like, talking about the Trump stuff. Right. Farquaad like, has this like, beautiful, he's like, it's, it's beautiful, it's perfect. It's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot it's of Trump very politics. Though. It's very underbaked. But we were saying, like, this is ahead of its time. We consider, like, there's literally, like, Eddie Murphy's, I know it's not quite the same because he's a man being touched by a woman, but there's, like, Me Too level, like, He expresses his physical consent. boundaries we need and consent. consent. Yeah. All that stuff. There's a rapist who gets punched and, I think, killed by The Rock. <laughs> like, you see him head into The Rock real hard. Yeah. I mean, trauma. So this this movie is, I think it was ahead of its time. I think it's really talking about a lot of people being like oh it sucks that fiona had to change her body to be accepted by a shrek but that's not what happened it's not what happens at all she's so ready to show that she's she's a sh- ogre to him because she thinks when they kiss she's going to turn back into a person yeah and they don't mind they're still in love when they have that dynamic and then just happens to show us that a princess can look like whatever you want a princess well, to okay look also like. he's willing to overcome what is to him a negative about her appearance right, about her being pretty right and also i like the fact that her her true form is not a skinny white lady it's as it's as something else which is nice to show that a princess does not have to ultimately be they, she, they literally morph away that like iconic image of a princess into something else and it, that's her true form right. it's beautiful if you fucking hate on shrek around me i'm going to let you have it Wait, Shrek is a what? beautiful movie. Oh, all of my all feelings, your all my emotions, all my thoughts. Great. Get I didn't get a knife out even. Shrink. That's your knife noise. Shrink. Shrink. It's it's not the snick. Yeah, that's that's that's, 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 that's trademark. Snick. That's great. Mine's shrink. Wait, is it? What is it? Shrink. Shrink. How do you spell that? If I were shrink. to make a comic book, it's of you just pulling shrink, out. but being said like <laughs> shrink. Oh, I feel like there's a T or an N. Ding. Yeah. Remember the gem noise in Diablo? Oh, yeah. That, noise. that, was, that was pretty good. I think that yeah. lasted because that sounded like it. Yeah, so uh, I just, I mean, I know there's going to be more Shrek. And that's, I. Are you excited? I'm excited. I'm actually really looking forward to Shrek 2. I was sort of bored by Shrek 1 mm-hmm. because a lot of the jokes don't land. Uh, it's a lot of the plot is badly executed, but overall. Like, I like that it just is a bunch of shit and piss in a kid's movie. Oh, oh yeah. Also, like, again, it flies by. When I checked the, the time stamp at 70 minutes in, you laughed I was out loud. astonished. You started dancing. I puked. <laughs> I danced so hard, I puked. Yeah, it was great. It was amazing. So, yeah, uh, let's leave it here. Well, actually, one more thing. I okay. do wish for a little more puke. I think that was an underrepresented puke, body. Yeah. There's a lot Function. of goo and earwax and and piss and shit, but and farting, yeah, and some tears. Uh, but you want yeah. more? Yeah, actually, and there was some. I mean, I know it was spit, but I sort of imagined the cum it has come. Yeah, when he spits on all the peasants. If you're a fan of imagining cum on people in movies, there were a few opportunities in Trek to project that. So what was the other one? There was the spitting on the peasants. Um, and then there's a scene where he rubs one out. Yeah, that that scene where he just jacks off, <laughs> just Shrek jacking off. I, what I want to say is, Shrek has become like a punchline. I think because yeah. it's so incongruous in like pop culture to have this like really odd looking, <laughs> it's just a very strange thing. Shrek holds up. I would show my kids Shrek. Yeah, I have none, teach but you, I would <laughs> teach him about sex and love. This is where you st- it all starts with Shrek, all roads and pi- I'm, and shit and piss. I'm not gonna let them learn anything about shit and piss until they can watch Shrek. They'll be like, Daddy, like, what's this why is the oblong green blob bathing himself in shit? <laughs> and also, up until four years old, they'll be like screaming every time they take a shit because they don't know what it is. I'm not gonna tell them. 
So, okay, so going into Shrek 2, we want to see their relationship develop. We want to see what's happening with Shrek and Dr- with Donkey and Dragon. Donkey and Dragon, what's Donkey, Donkey, Donkey and Shrek. Shrek. Yeah. Don- uh, Shrek and Fiona, uh, uh, Fiona and Donkey. Um, we want to see what happens in the fairy tale world more. The the creatures are free again from mm-hmm. Lord Farquaad. Yeah, there's so much room for, for everything. Everything. And I think the friendship between Donkey and Shrek on the first one is like so effortlessly introduced to us i think there's room there for more like yeah. they meet and donkey's so fucking stupid and it's not that he's really accepting he's just fucking stupid i think or no he's he gets he's emotionally smart but i think he's played off as a, a bit of a dunce mm. and, and like inte- his intelligence level is low but his because he doesn't listen he's always just talking 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 but there are moments where he's he becomes a better friend in his own way a therapist yeah, yeah. But I, I really think that since we were just sort of thrown into that friendship, they might take some more time to actually explore it, see where it's going, see more where it came from. So we, we've barely developed this, Charles, but is it time to ask when will it end? I'm not there yet. I'm, oh. I want more. No, this, I mean, it's not even started yet. This is yeah. literally, we're negative, I think. Right. This movie came out and I'm like, I'm in a hole waiting to be lifted up. By more Shrek. By more Shrek. Well, stay tuned for the next episode of When Will It End when we explore Shrek 2. This has been a podcast from Josh and Charles Productions that was produced by Josh Landis and edited by Charles Hobby. Special thanks to Waste Management for the use of their song Windblown Dirge. You can find them on Spotify, SoundCloud, or I, uh, a, rec- a record, probably. If you liked what you heard, please rate and review us on iTunes. And you can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter as at WWIE Podcast. We'd love to hear from you. I guess. Yeah, so send us an email. It's uh, wwiepodcast at gmail.com. You can send us ideas for other series. You can ask us questions. We might even read them on the show. So yeah, wwiepodcast at gmail.com. Thanks so much for listening, and we'll see you in a week.